So I got this message recently by a premium member. And we here in premium, we track a lot of wallets, right? We track wallets of influencers. We track wallets of institutional investors. We track wallets of people that in general tend to make very good trades. We track all of that activity and find out what are they buying. And then we analyze ourselves so it makes sense to jump on a certain trade as well. So we don't just randomly trade something, right? We trade based on the subset of the people that we believe are already beating the market. That's our strategy. And so I got a message from one of the members and asking, hey, yes, we are getting a lot of winning trades here, but isn't that simply because everything is going up now in this bull market? And to a degree, that is true. To a degree, a lot of altcoins are now going up. Not all of them, but a lot of small coins where you have temporary attention are going up. Now, is that a bad thing? It's not necessarily a bad thing if you can somewhat distinguish when bull and bear markets are actually taking place. And I personally change my strategy massively whenever I feel that we are in a bear market versus a bull market. I do not take the same approaches whatsoever. For example, I did not buy a single altcoin up until October of last year. I didn't buy any and I only shorted altcoins selectively. So I looked at what are the current tokenomics around this particular altcoin? Does it have potentially vesting unlocks? Does it have a lot of token inflation? And how did it historically perform relative to Ethereum and to Bitcoin? And if I saw a lot of bad tokenomics for a project and I saw a very long-term underperformance versus Bitcoin and Ethereum, then I would short that asset in a bear market. But I would never short that asset in a bull market. And that's, of course, because of inherent leverage, right? When you've got a small altcoin with small market cap, then just a little bit of money can move the price massively. And that then in the end means that in bull markets, a lot of altcoins tend to outperform just the Bitcoins and Ethereums. But that also means that you can even have bad long-term tokenomics. If there's simply just enough capital flocking into the system, you can be right, but in the end, you might not be liquid enough to stay right and see the price come back down again because it's simply pumping too much in a bull market. And now the exact opposite is true in that bull market, right? So in a bull market, I buy altcoins. I never short any altcoins. So what we are doing here with this wallet tracking and getting inspiration, what to potentially trade, is simply just finding the best risk-adjusted bets we try to get the best information in the market and we bet on rising prices and use all kinds of tailwinds to outperform. One tailwind, of course, is inherent leverage, right? When everything is going up, having smaller coins that we have in the portfolio is obviously nice. Another tailwind is to buy the coins where in general the smart money is buying. A third tailwind is to simply just look at US dollar valuations and since everything is going up and since we think crypto is expanding, it's nice to be in crypto in general, to be allocated to crypto and have positive data exposure. Now, here's the thing. I personally determine whether or not we are in a bull or in a bear market based on the stablecoin market cap development. Not the stablecoin dominance, but the stablecoin market cap development. So what I'm looking at is, is currently fiat getting into crypto or is it getting out of crypto? And the reason why I look at this chart is first of all, fundamentally, it's easy to understand when money flows into crypto, prices should on average go up. But secondly, that chart also has very little volatility. So let me show you that chart over here. So the very first reflection point we see here, we went from bull to bear, that is when FTX collapsed. So the Terra Luna protocol collapsed, the UST stablecoin depacked, and that was the very first time when actually money was flowing out of crypto. So what happened here is that people took their stablecoins, they send it to a centralized exchange, for example. That centralized exchange would then exchange this back into fiat and people pulled out their fiat. So they converted their stablecoins into fiat. Now, since October of last year, this turned around. We flattened out, right? There's no more contraction of crypto. Now money flows into crypto again. People deposit their fiat and of course that turns into stablecoins. And so the stablecoin market caps are going up. And so of course some altcoins are doing now massive, massive returns. So we've got two types of inflows now. The first inflow, obviously, through the Bitcoin ETF. So traditional finance is getting into everything. 
they are buying Bitcoin, they push up the Bitcoin price, but also a very different kind of inflow with those fiat deposits on centralized exchanges. So I believe right now the altcoins get mainly pushed through retail and Bitcoin gets mainly pushed through the institutional investors. So the correlation between those two assets is very likely also going to go down over time because the kind of demands is very, very different. So what's the important takeaway here? It's super, super important to adjust your strategy massively from where you currently see the market going. And the stablecoin market cap might not be the perfect measure, but it's the measure that worked for me. You need to have some kind of measure to distinguish bull and bear, and you need to be willing to completely switch your strategy if you want to ride those waves, right? If you simply just want to dollar cost average into Bitcoin and you're okay with those temporary 70% drops and you simply just buy more at the bottom, then that's totally fine as well. But if you want to ride those waves and you want to take some levered exposure to the market in a bull market and you want to protect your assets somewhat in a bear market, then you need to have a system on how to distinguish those two. And ideally, you decide on that system beforehand, right? Before a reflection point happens. Because that's the problem, right? Emotions are very, very high once we are in the moment. If the market is very heated and you do not have a predetermined method to decide when to sell, then you simply just keep on holding and you will ride the wave down. And this is what happens to the majority. So make sure you follow the right channels. Maybe this one. So if it's the first time here, feel free to subscribe. I publish these regularly. And if you want to help this channel grow, then feel free to give this a like as well. See you next time. Cheers.